Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Let's Review the 19th album where we have been watching movies that I have received in the year 2019, which I have yet to watch, and my list of films of that year that I received but still have not watched. As you can see, we are going to be discussing another film in our repertoire, and that film is... The plan here is to discuss the overview of the movie, meaning who made it and who's in it. Then we'll move on to the story at hand, where I generally elaborate on the items that I liked in the movie and did not enjoy as much in the movie. Then we'll close it all up in a wrap-up before we go, where I generally sum up everything that we discussed. And on rare occasions, we may discuss the themes that the story tried to parlay, if there were any of note. Now, let's... Review. Starting with the overview of the movie, here we'll be discussing who's in the movie, who made the movie, and what the movie's about. Akira is a 1988 Japanese animated post apocalyptic cyberpunk film directed by Katsuhiro Otomo, produced by Ryohi Suzuki and Shunzo Kato, and written by Otomo and Iso Hashimoto, based on Otomo's 1982 manga of the same name. Set in a dystopian 2019, Akira tells the story of Shotaro Kaneda, a leader of a biker gang whose childhood friend, Tetsuo Shima, acquires incredible telekinetic abilities after a motorcycle accident, eventually threatening an entire military complex amidst chaos and rebellion in the sprawling futuristic metropolis of Neo-Tokyo. So the review of the movie goes as follows. My review of the movie is that it's absolutely amazing. The film is a masterclass in every sense of the word from its ever beautiful animation to its wonderful and deeply rich characters and beautiful voiceover work to go along with it, to the amazing writing and world building that exceeds in its excellence of execution and a story so powerful and even more resonant now than ever before. This film is a tried and true classic that's one to watch and that people will watch for generations upon generations. So now we're going to be delving into the themes that matter. This is the segment where I discuss a certain idea or message that I felt the film was trying to parlay and try to interpret it as best I can. So the themes that matter here consist of multiple ideas. The film stresses not only the turmoil of the time, but it can also be related to the turmoil of our time at the moment, commenting on the World War II era of nuclear war and its mass casualties, while also touching on the idea of civil liberties between citizens and other citizens, as well as citizens and authority figures such as military police, uh, law enforcement, and other authoritarian establishments, and spirituality and religion, meaning the idea of how devoted you are to something how much you believe in it and how likely it is to come true, as well as corruption and greed in politics and government, which has plagued our society more than ever uh, in the current times. Outside of more plain terms, the film also delves into more deeper self-human reflections in regards to pride, humanity, morality, integrity, and loyalty. The film's use of Kaneda and Tetsuo's relationships stress how one person's want for more power, in this case Tetsuo, can lead to damaging effects not only on themselves but on others also. While in reverse, on the other side of that coin, you can find in this film that one person, in this case being Kaneda, 
Uh, one person's act of selflessness and loyalty and pure heart, even in pain, can bring the love out of anyone despite what they've done. And to call back to those earlier general themes, I mentioned earlier that these times we live in are now crazy with people all over the world, from Hong Kong trying to find a way to stand for their rights as they should, to Brazil and whose citizens were rallying against their governments in greed while America and Iran inch closer and closer to a potential world war. There's a lot that this film unpacks and the movie touches on these sensitive topics. To wrap it up before we go, this film brings me back to it a lot. This is the third time I've seen this film and every time I watched it, I've picked up something new that I didn't see previous. And I'm glad for it because this is storytelling at its best. Something you can watch multiple times, learn to grow to understand it. And I'm not just going to recommend it, but I will say that I think you need to watch this film. Because you not only walk away entertained, but you walk away thinking about it and thinking about what it was trying to tell you. And to me, if a film can do that, then it's 